Hi everyone, this is Teacher Nab Kenya Aida from Trinity College, Nabingo. Let us thank the Lord for all the blessings of the day and let us continue to pray to Him so that this pandemic of COVID-19 may be wiped out of our countries. Let us continue to observe the SOPs, washing hands, sanitizing and staying at home if possible and we protect ourselves and other people. Today we want to look at injustices in the church history. And under this theme, we are going to look at the act of slave trade and oppression of the minority groups. Before us, dear viewers, we have this photo of the Uganda Matters who were killed in Namgongo. Namgongo, it is a place found in Uganda in central of Uganda in a region called Uganda. This is where these young men who accepted Christ and they became Christians, it created a problem between them and the by then king of Uganda, King Mwanga, and they ended up losing their lives because of accepting Christianity. That was an injustice. So today we want to look at slave trade as one of the major areas of injustices which were carried out in church history. Slavery, we know it by the Inhumane Act, whereby human beings were bought and sold. Like you go to a shop and you buy a shirt, you buy a skirt, a pair of shoes, you go to the market, you buy tomatoes, you buy oranges. This is the way that these human beings were being bought. In that photo, you can see the way they were being transported, chained, and then made to move long distances. This was very bad. And what makes it a very bad act? Because priests and bishops also own the slaves in the church history. When you look at that, that photo, you see how these slaves were being beaten by their masters. So it was not something fair to do to a human being. Let us look at the reasons that make slave trade an injustice. Girls and boys, once you meet such a question which says that why was slave trade an injustice in the church history? Remember to qualify this question using either because or due to as your qualifiers. Make sure you qualify these points. Mine here are not qualified, but to you as you're reading, make sure you qualify every point. For example, we can say because it caused a lot of bodily injuries on the slaves. Like we saw in our previous photo, the slaves were chained. They were beaten. They were made to move long distances. And this caused the injuries on their bodies. If a chain is put, leave alone these chains that people wear for swag. But chains, a person to be chained, you're moving, others are slow, others are falling down. People definitely had to get injuries. Another reason why it was an injustice is because slaves were killed, those that were weak, they could be so expensive to maintain to the owners, to the traders, and those who had bought them. So to get rid of them and their expenses, they could be killed. That was so inhumane to do to a human being. Slaves were subjected to long working hours without any payment. Remember, these slaves were bought by their masters, and a master would pay a trader who was selling these human beings. So to you, who was bought as a slave, you were a property to the person who bought you. The way you buy your shirt, this is how this young man, this woman, was to the master. So another one, the wives and husbands 
were separated forcefully, making them to live single lives. Even if they were taken to the same destination, a man would serve in a different home, a woman would be sold to another home, and these people would separate without meeting. Maybe if God wished, they would meet. But this one made them to lead very hard lives. Boys and girls, as you read about slave trade, we want to integrate our information from history, most especially the history of East Africa. So you'll go there and borrow some reasons why slave trade was bad, especially those reasons that made slave trade to be put to an end. Then you'll come and integrate them here. Don't forget to qualify these points using because or due to. Let us continue by looking at how the slaves or slave trade was put to an end. When we come to the methods that were used, some Africans stood up, some Europeans stood up, and they saw that this trade was very bad. So what happened was the UMCA started villages for freed slaves where they could be catered for. So in these villages, a freed slave was that person who was freed by the master, who was redeemed from being a slave to living a normal life. Now, these villages were started where these people who had come out of slavery would live, would be accepted to get married, raise families, and live a happy life with no strings tied that um, I belong to this master or she belongs to this master. So in 1807, the bill prohibiting slave trade was passed. And this bill was containing information that selling and buying of human beings was an offense. And whoever would be caught, the law would act on him. Some freed slaves were even trained as seminarians and priests. So the church came in and trained them to become priests, to become bishops, to become brothers in the church, so that they could live a free life and serve Christ as their Lord. Some were even trained in agriculture, in carpentry, in joinery, in, in bricklaying. This one helped them to earn a living, to live as human beings. Then some Christian groups, and individuals also wrote and published the horrifying state of slaves. We have an example of Dr. Living, Dr. David Livingstone. I'm using a capital E as an abbreviation for example. In Sierra, when we are writing our examples, we begin with a capital F. That is a unique requirement. So failure to use a capital F in your exams, you may be penalized and you will lose your two or one mark. So let us also put that one in, in our minds that if we are writing any example, after a full stop, we say, for example, Dr. David Livingstone wrote about the holifying state of slaves in Africa. Then schools and colleges were also opened for these freed slaves to study and live a normal life. And here freed slaves proved that they were wise. They proved to be very knowledgeable in different aspects of their areas of study. We have also the Holy Ghost fathers and sisters of the sacred heart of Jesus. These ones settled the slaves who were in Bagamoyo, Tanzania. Remember in Bagamoyo, it was a center, it was a market for slaves. So this one helped the, the slaves to live a normal life. Then jobs were created for these freed 
slaves to also work and earn a living. While looking at the unjust slave traders and injustice, we said that these people were made to work with no pay. So in the steps second to end slave trade, these slaves, after redeeming them out of slavery, they were allowed to work and some money, however much it was not a lot, but they were paid for the services that they used to render to different people. So read more books, research, and you'll find out. Still, we are emphasizing that you go to history of East Africa and borrow some methods which were used to end slave trade in the church history. Now, not only slave trade was the only injustice in the church history. We had the oppression of the minority groups, and these minority groups were very many. But the first one that we are going to look at, we have the pagan minority. These were oppressed because during that era of Emperor Constantine, they refused to believe in Christianity. So what Emperor Constantine did was to punish them, to kill them, to force them such that they could become Christians. So this is when the Christians by then used what we call crusades. A crusade is a forceful way of making a person believe in Christianity. That is in the church. That was a very bad act. It was an injustice because believing in Christianity it is a personal, a personal feeling. It is a personal belief. Then we also had the Muslim minority. These ones were mistreated by the Catholics. Especially these, the two were fighting for the Holy Land, what we call Palestine today. The Catholics wanted to capture this land from them. And then the Muslims were also saying, it is our land. And the Catholics mistreated them. So this was an injustice. Then we have the heretic minority. These people held different beliefs from those accepted by the church. So they were stopped from associating with any Christianity. They were stopped from associating with any Christians. The church also had its own reasons. Maybe this heretic people. They would even influence Christians and they would take up different ideas, but also this was an injustice. So we have so many groups. So we are in our assignment, we shall go and research about the various groups, the minority groups that were also oppressed. Stay tuned for that. But now let us look at the examples of individuals who fought for justice in this world. We have Mahatma Gandhi, who was born in India. So Mahatma Gandhi was a spiritual as well as a political leader in the 20th century. So this, this man helped to free the Indians from the British rule. He he is also honored as the father of the nation of India. So through his effort, India attained its independence in 1947. We know that colonialism, as we know it, it was an injustice to the Africans and other countries in Asia. So unfortunately, Mahatma Gandhi in 1948, he was shot by a Hindu fanatic when Mahatma Gandhi was going to New Delhi to attend prayers. So that briefly, that is Mahatma Gandhi. But as you read more about Indian history, you'll find more contribution, how Mahatma fought for justice. We have another person in Africa here, Nelson Mandela of South Africa. This was a president. But before becoming a president born in 1918 to a chief in Transkei region, Mandela was politically active from his youthful 
days. We are seeing him organizing the youth to oppose the apartheid regime. He was imprisoned in the Robin Islands for 27 years, but he did not give up on his fight for Africa's rights. In integrate some information from the South African history, then you'll understand who Mandela is and who Mandela was. So he used the non-violent methods to oppose the injustices in South Africa. Unfortunately, on December 5th, 2013, we are seeing Mandela passing on and he was buried as a hero of Africa. His contribution to justice of Africans, we cannot exhaust it. But you read more, integrate information, borrow a leaf in from your South African history. We have another one, Don Hilda Camara, who was the Archbishop in Brazil. So this man, he advocated for peaceful opposition to injustices rather than being violent that if a person slaps you on this cheek according to don hilda you had to turn another cheek so that for him he had a belief that using non-violent means was more stronger to fight injustices and this one would bring truth and peace in the societies so to him he said that using injustice to fight an injustice, it brought about a cycle of injustices in the society. So he was personally against the killing of people in order to bring justice. That is why he promoted nonviolent means to bring peace, to bring justice. So to him, he hated wars, he hated weapons, he hated everything that would make a human being to suffer. Now, there are so many people. We have Mother Teresa of Calcutta. We have the, we have the Princess of Wales, Diana. All of those people fought for justice to prevail in the society. But our assignment today, we are going to research on the following minority groups and find out how they con how they were oppressed in the church history the jewish minority the christian minority and the protestant minority dear viewers don't forget to subscribe and also to do this work don't forget to qualify the points that be the points that fall on the question we looked at why was slave trade an injustice? And we are saying we qualify using because and due to. So, for more information, please visit the link below. May the good Lord bless us. Let us continue observing the SOPs so that we fight this pandemic. But don't also forget to pray for the plans of man are in vain if god does not fulfill them go and read proverbs chapter 19 verse 20. may the good lord be with us and keep us safe bye bye for now i'm teacher ida from trinity college Nabingo.